Hey folks, Ray from DCRamerica.com here. Tim, answer one of the most common questions I get. No, not which watch to get, or which trainer, bike, computer, or action cam, or drone, or anything else, but rather how I set up the data fields on my wearable and bike computer type devices. Uh, so in other words, how do I configure the data metrics that I see mid-ride, mid-run, mid-anything, um, and what are those metrics that I prefer myself? Uh, now I'll caveat that there's no like wrong way to do that, as long as it's my way. Um, but whatever you want to put on these is fine. That's why they're customizable. That's the whole point. Um, what I found though for myself is that that doesn't change very much. I looked at the post I did almost 10 years ago, and they're the exact same metrics. And there's actually some very, very slight nuanced differences, um, but they're almost the exact same metrics. Uh, and so I think that tends to be because most people get into a training program, into some sort of way of training more than necessarily a given program, and that's generally how they're gonna line their data fields too. So for example, if you're targeting heart rate, you're probably gonna have various heart rate kind of driven metrics, whereas if you're targeting power, you're gonna have various power driven metrics. Um, now, in my case, because I'm using Garmin, that means I have to set up each device individually. So every time I get a new watch, Watch. I have to reset those all up manually. Um, I wish Garmin would get on board with just allowing me to like templatize these. Like if I can go ahead and just simply take what I want and call that my running template. And then as a new device comes out and I go and buy that new device, I could simply apply that template to that. would be so useful. Why don't, why don't they do that? And there's way more ideas beyond that, by the way. Like Garmin could take that and apply it to uh, influencers or sports pros or anything they wanted to and say, hey, let me see what Chris Froome's data fields are or what Alberto Contador's data frames are or why do I keep choosing people who dope? But either way, that sort of thing, you can go ahead and do that and that would be cool. Or you could just simply download the template from this video if that thing existed. It doesn't. So with that, we're just going to dive right into it. Um, in this case, I'm using the 4935 for this particular video. That's merely because it was the most charged up one I had. Uh, and I'm using the Edge 520 Plus, not because it's the most charged up one I have, but just because it's what I'm using most of the time around here. So starting off on the running side of things, what you'll notice is things tend to be divided up into the entire run and then a portion of the run. For the very first screen here, I've got my timer field, my distance field, my heart rate, and my average pace. In other words, what is my total time on this run, my total distance, my current heart rate, because I don't actually care about average heart rate. Uh, for me, that's not a super valuable metric. Um, I want to know what my heart rate's doing right now. Um, average heart rate is too delayed to be of any use in most cases, so I just want to know what I'm doing right now. Uh, and my average pace is actually useful because I want to know what the average pace is for that entire run. Next page is sort of my lap splits. And I use laps most of the time manually. I don't tend to use them auto lap except when I'm doing long runs. Uh, so in this case, I use laps for like intervals and stuff like that. So tell me my lap distance, my lap time, my lap pace, uh, and my current heart rate. Again, I wanna know my current heart rate. I don't really care about my lap heart rate because if I'm doing say 800 meter interval, by the time that heart rate catches up, it could be like 300 meters into it. So the average will be drawn down. I wanna know exactly what my heart rate is at this point in time. Heart rate in general, sometimes I just go off a run. I just wanna run purely by heart rate. So this allows me to see my current heart rate and then the little, gar little colors that I never really actually use. Uh, I got the time of day. So if I wanna go ahead and just validate what time it is, if I'm running late or something like that, I can do that really quickly and easily. Uh, and then I've got sort of the one data field that I don't tend to use a ton, uh, which has my running power at the top, uh, and then has a lap time, because usually if I'm using this field, I'm doing some sort of lap driven interval. So I'm doing, uh, you know, like 90 seconds on or something like that. So I wanna just have that uh, set there. I've got my current heart rate again, all about current heart rate, and then my current pace. So I can kind of compare pace to uh, power. I do wish this is an area that Garmin had the ability to do a rolling pace like Apple does. It's super cool, super useful to be able to say, show my last rolling pace of 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever the case may be, um, that would be really useful. And then I have the breadcrumb trail option here in the case that I'm following a course, I'm not doing that today. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's, that's all there is to it. I'm, I'm really simple when it comes to what I want for a running standpoint. When you get over to the cycling side of things, things actually aren't all that different in the grand scheme of things. Um, so on my main page, like if I was going out for a couple hour ride, this is what this would show. It would have my time up top, in other words, my current ride time. I then have my wattage, my power output that is, uh, and 10 seconds smooth. I like 10 seconds smooth. It's kind of easy to trend by. It's not like instantaneous, which to me is totally useless. It's too jumpy. Uh, and 30 second isn't bad, but it's not something I, I tend to do everything by. Uh, then I have my distance. Uh, this would show miles once to get to that point in time. Then I have the current cadence, my speed, and my heart rate. Uh, so those are kind of the core metrics I want. Uh, if I'm doing power meter testing, which is sort of a lot of what I do here, of course, uh, I have my power in three different 
chunks. And I display this on all the head units I have on my bike at once. So I power in 3 seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. And at the very bottom, I've got either balance or cadence. And the reason why I use this is if I have dual-based power meters where it's, you know, like a Vector 3, PowerTap P1 pedals, Verasioma, anything that's dual-based, I want to validate that both sides of that equation are functioning. And the easiest way to do that is to look at the balance field. Um, if I got valid val balance numbers, then things are good. If not, then something's probably broken. Um, next, if I'm climbing somewhere, if I'm in the Alps or something like that, then I'm going to go ahead and do vertical speed, uh, grade, distance, and speed. Um, generally speaking, these are, are kind of like a Debbie Downer screen to look at. You just look at it and it's like, <sighs> that, that's basically all it is. Uh, after that, I have kind of like bike tech focus screen here. So I've got my pressure sensor um, on both tires using the Quark uh, TireWiz. I did a video on that up there. Um, I've got my current speed just because why not? Um, and then I've got my gear shifting battery. On my main bike, it's ETAP. On my tri bike, it's DI2, uh, but it shows me the battery status there. Then I've got the GPS map. Uh, right now we're inside, so no GPS, but you can see where you are. Uh, on the case of the Edge 520 Plus, I get a legit map. If I was using a regular Edge 520, not a legit map. Uh, and then I've got elevation, like a typical elevation graph where I am again. Not super useful here in the Netherlands, uh, at least in Amsterdam. Uh, but once I go like down to the mountains in the Alps or something like that, then this is more useful for me. Finally, I have the lap page. Uh, so this shows me my lap splits. So the top of my laps time of the entire ride. Then I have my current total distance. And then below that, it'll show me uh, the lap number, uh, the time on that lap number, and then the average power for that lap. Uh, this is how I've got this one particularly configured. Uh, so if I'm using this screen, I'm usually doing like interval laps, typically in a loop scenario. So like at a park or somewhere where I can just do like a 1K or 2K loop or something like that. And I'll be hitting the lap button as I come around each time. So I can kind of keep trending over time there. Uh, and that's that's it. Um, as I said, I'm pretty basic, and there's and I, what you may have noticed there. There's not much in the way of Connect IQ um, on on either device really. And so I think Connect IQ has an awesome place in life. I just for what I do, I don't tend to use it a ton. Uh, there are exceptions to both sides of that. Um, for example, on the cycling side, there's an app that I occasionally use that will uh, connect to multiple power meters and multiple sensors at once and record that into one file. Um, I haven't found the app super dependable yet, so it hasn't become part my repertoire of testing aside so I use multiple devices to do that and on the running side uh, there's an app called race pace that I like quite a bit um, that I would use for racing to be able to correct lap splits and stuff I wrote a whole piece on it you can see right there I'll link down below in there um, on that app but for the most part I'm kind of simplistic when it comes to connect IQ tap apps and stuff like that uh, I think there's a ton of potential there I think they're useful for a lot of people um, I just wish it was easier for me to assign those to devices um, when I get new devices and copy them, move them around and stuff like that. Be really great to have that web interface or a mobile interface to do that. And again, the templates that I mentioned earlier on. So with that, hope you found this interesting. Just kind of a super quick look at my data fields. Again, no data fields are wrong. However you configure them is right, but this is sort of how I do it and uh, what's worked for me for about a decade or so. So if you found this interesting, whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps the channel as well as the subscribe button if you want to get more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.